Hmm. Lenovo ThinkBook Plus Gen 3. This was just shown at CES 2022. And Lenovo is one of those manufacturers that are just uh, a no brainer for businesses to buy. They buy this for their employees in bulk and uh, people kind of just buy these machines when they need to do work. The ThinkBook is one of those types of machines that's known to be for work, not creation of uh, media, not audio, not video, but you know, like developers, us, writing code, documents, things like that. This one is not doing that. <laughs> this one is a weird, weird monster. Here's what I think happened. I think a couple years ago, uh, the people at Lenovo saw that um, Apple created this touch bar and they're like, ooh, a touch bar. You know what? We can do better. We can make a bigger touch bar. It'll be a full screen and it'll have all the capabilities, you can drag windows to it and stuff like that. Let's do that, yeah. Meanwhile, a couple years later, <laughs> the touch bar is not so popular. Apple yanks the touch bar and Lenovo has been working on this for a couple years now. So they decided not to cut their losses and to put it out anyway. What an ugly, ugly piece of, all right. I'm not gonna say it's a piece of, I'm not gonna say, uh, the last Lenovo idea pad I tested last year was in fact a piece of <laughs> So I will never touch an idea pad again. But ThinkBook is a different story. It's a different category of laptops. This one, it is a very weird looking machine. It's priced very well at $1,400. Now it is kind of an odd form factor. It's 17.3 inches in width, and it's a 21 by 10 ratio of the screen, which is by today's standards is pretty weird. 16 by 10 is now the accepted standard. I mean, there is no standard, but that's kind of what manufacturers have been going with. It seems to be an optimal size for doing work and watching videos. But the screen is not the problem. The problem is having the keyboard shifted all the way to the left and this weird eight inch display on the right. First of all, left-handed people are not gonna use this thing, not in any kind of uh, meaningful way. They're gonna have to reach over to use the other screen. Second, anybody that's using the computer is gonna feel really cramped, like they're using a 14 inch computer or a 13 inch computer when they have this huge monitor to work with. I guess it's not so bad, we've done that before, but because they've had to cramp the keyboard so tight, I wonder where the heck they put the speakers. Anyway, not a gaming or a multimedia machine, I know, but still I like to have decent speakers in my computer. When my local store gets this in, I'm gonna stop over there and check it out to see what kind of monster Lenovo created. But aside from the weird dual displays, uh, some laptops have that nowadays and it's not too unusual, it's just the layout is unusual. Uh, this will have the latest 12th generation Intel Core H series processors and have up to 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory and up to one terabyte of PCI NVMe generation four solid state drive so this will be a pretty nice, powerful machine. And the price is pretty good at $1,400. Is it gonna be a machine that we really want to use and develop on? I don't know, what are you gonna do with that second screen? Have documentation open over there? Maybe if you're doing mobile development, that can have your little emulator down there. Huh, that's actually not bad. Am I changing my mind about this thing? If that is gonna be a touch screen, then maybe you can interact with the emulator Android emulator, of course, like you can with an actual device. Not bad. It's gonna be pretty powerful. It's gonna have a lot of RAM, fast storage. So maybe this is a decent machine for developers, but it's pretty specific. I mean, that's one example where this might come in handy. You got any other ideas what you can do with that little eight inch screen that's to the side as a developer? Let me know in the comments down below. Be curious to see what your thoughts are about that. Now, on the other hand, the ThinkPad by Lenovo also, the Z13 is looking like, well, um, okay, Apple has a notch now, but we're gonna do the notch smarter. And this one looks like it's a more timely arrival of a different kind of notch. It's a notch that actually sticks out of the form of the laptop instead of taking up screen space, which actually is not bad. That's not a bad idea. If you need more space for your webcam, there you go. You can have a little notch on the outside. Of course, then you're gonna have a little piece sticking out and Apple is not gonna have that. But Lenovo is thinking, well, maybe we can. Let's try it out, why the heck not? So the ThinkPad Z13 has an inverse notch. 
more like a bump. These are also supposed to have the AMD Ryzen 7 Pro chips inside. So we've got a couple of Lenovo machines that are on opposite sides of the spectrum. Both have experimental features in different ways, yet both are designed to do work. It's interesting to see these kinds of uh, machines, the Lenovo machines specifically, getting out into the enterprise. We'll see how that goes. If you like these little short reports that I've been doing about CES and what laptops developers can expect in 2022, give this video a like. Let me know if you wanna see more of these. And if you've got your favorite one that I've been talking about so far, also hit me up in the comments down below. Maybe I'll pick up that machine when it becomes available. We're looking at a couple months out now, so we'll see. I really wanna test this out against the Apple Silicon machines I have. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.